Thank you for downloading or streaming this message from Emmanuel Church. We are one church with multiple locations, and we believe God wants to bless you right where you are. In a few moments, you're going to hear some practical teaching from God's Word that I believe will be inspiring and relevant to your life. First, though, if you haven't yet experienced Emmanuel Live, we encourage you to go to our website, eclife.org, to check out our service times and locations so that you can experience Emmanuel in person or through our online campus. If this message blesses you and you'd like to support the ministry financially, again, you can go to eclife.org and click on the Giving tab and choose Online Campus at your campus. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope this message will be an encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. Well, good morning, Emmanuel Church. How are you feeling today? Not sure if, oh, there's my microphone right there. Let's do that one more time if you didn't hear me. Good morning, Emmanuel Church. How are you feeling today? Good to see you. Hey, if this is your very, very first time at any one of our locations, our Banda campus, our Franklin campus, our Garfield Park campus, our Seymour campus, if you're watching us at our online campus here at Greenwood or one of our e-microsites, and this is your first time, we want to give you a very special, warm Emmanuel welcome. Can we give it up for everyone who is visiting for the first time? It's a big deal for us, to, for, for you to accept an invitation to be here with us today. And if you're not brand new, welcome back. It's good to see you. We started a series last week called Who's Counting? And essentially what we said last week to kind of sum things up, if you missed it last week, is that counting is a good thing. If we're going to change our life, if we're going to reach our New Year's resolutions, how many of you set New Year's resolutions this year? Raise your hand. Yes, I did too. I did too. I think I had like 23 of them, but uh, <laughs> went over. I kind of overdid it. Um, but if you set New Year's resolutions or you wanted to change your life, this is a great time of the year to do that. You're going to have to count things. Counting is very powerful. Counting matters because math doesn't lie. Have you ever noticed that? Like the numbers are the numbers. Counting gives us feedback. Counting shows us where we are. Counting shows us that we're making progress or we're not making progress. Counting creates this thing called consistency. And when, if you want to change your life in any specific way, whether it's emotional, spiritual, physical, you've got to be consistent in that area. Counting creates habits. Habits, we first form our habits and then our habits form us. And so we started last week by talking about attitude because attitude is important, right? Attitude makes up the quality of our life. But before we get into that, I wanted to also say this. Counting can be a bad thing. We said that last week. We looked at the example of King David and how God actually punished David and all of Israel because he counted and took a census of all the people. And so we were kind of looking at that like, whoa, is counting good? Is counting bad? Like, and what we said, the difference of what makes counting good versus bad is the motive. Why are you counting? Are you counting because you want to look good, you want attention, you want to live a self-sufficient life, a life apart from God? Or are you counting to, to show the progress that God wants you to make in your life? Or are you counting the areas or the things in your life that, are, that God is calling you to change? And so counting can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. The difference maker is our motive. So last week we talked about attitude. I gave you some specific things to count. Hopefully you guys did those things and you saw a 55, up to a 55% improvement of your attitude. Did anybody see that kind of improvement? No? Okay. <laughs> How about 25%? How about 10%? How about 5%? Make me feel good here. Okay, come on, come on. Okay. Uh, so today I want to talk to you about uh, something uh, difficult, something uh, that we want to hear about, but we're, we're, we're kind of shy about. There's some complicated things uh, that go along with it, um, but it, it's, it's, it's much needed and we need to talk about it, especially in church. I want to talk to you today about health and fitness, health and fitness. And before you shut me off, before you walk out, before you leave, uh, so just, just hang with me for a second. What's interesting about health and fitness is that the top three New Year's resolutions every single year, or I should say the top three out of five, have to do with health and fitness. Has to do, you look at it every single year. This year is no different, 2023. I want to, people say, I want to exercise more, I want to eat less, I want to eat more healthy. The top three out of five New Year's resolutions have to do with health and fitness. But yet, when you talk about these types of issues, especially in a context like this in church, 
it can be really tricky. It's sort of like walking into a minefield. And the reason is because there are so many voices out there today that are speaking to this issue. I mean, if you get on social media, you see all, you know, all these voices, you need to do it like this, you need to do these types of exercises, you need to do this type of intermittent fasting, or you need to do this type of, you know, uh, Sort of, sort of diet that's, you know, you know whatever it is. And, 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 and you get, sometimes you get these people that they have no shirt on, they've got a six pack of abs, and they're telling you what to do. And then they're telling you to buy their supplement and to get their program for $19.99 and, you know, to do this and that. And, and there's all these different theories and all these different opinions. And, and there's a lot of guilt and there's a lot of shame associated with, like, like, looking good and feeling good and all this stuff. And man, it is a minefield to step into this topic. And so I just want to acknowledge that and I want to let you know there's, there's no sale at the end of this talk. There's no Danny Anderson supplements to take. There's no Danny Anderson fitness class to sign up for. Okay, there's, there's no, so I've got no motive other than what God's will is for your life. I want you to know I'm for you. I'm not against you. I want you to know that God is for you on this particular issue. I'm passionate about health and fitness for a couple of reasons. Um, I wear this ring on my finger, and it's a special, it's my wedding ring, <clears throat> and it was given to me on August of uh, uh, 1999 on, on my wedding day. My mother gave it to me. It was actually her mother's ring, my grandmother. She gave it to my grandfather in uh, January 13th, 1951, when they got married. And interesting thing about my grandmother, she came over from Puerto Rico with my grandfather. Her name was Rose Cortez and married my grandfather in 1951. His name's Louis Vega or Louis, Louis Vega or Angel Vega. And um, not long after they had their children, she got sick. And she, she uh, actually, the month I was born, August 11th, August of 1977, I was born and my grandmother held me in her arms and she prayed over me twice according to what my mother said and then 14 days later she died. She was 44 years old. She died of heart disease. I'm 45 years old now. I'm a year older than my grandmother was when she passed away which is mind boggling. And so she held me and then she died. So health is kind of important to me because growing up, I'm like, I see pictures of my grandmother holding me. She, she's not around. My other grandmother, my dad's mother, she died of uh, cancer due to smoking. My grandfather died of cancer due, due to smoking. Um, my first cousin on my mom's side, one of my mom's sister's uh, daughters, her name was Corinne. She died at 22 years old of cancer. I've got obesity on both sides. My mom's side of the family ha deals with that. My dad's side of the family deals with that. I had an aunt who died from complications due to being obese. And so to me, I'm looking around at my family. I'm like, man, this ain't looking too good. You know, some people look at me and they say, man, it must be nice to have your genes or DNA. You know, you're tall, you're skinny. I'm like, you don't know anything about my family. You know, my genes are not, they're not that good. My dad was born with a, a bad valve, so old, when he got older, they had to do an open heart surgery and put a plastic valve in there. In fact, when you're in a room with my dad by yourself and you can't hear anything else, you can hear his heart clicking because of the plastic valve. It's weird. I said, Dad, what's that sound? That's my heart beating. My dad has diabetes, my brother has diabetes. I mean, it's just like, so health to me is, is like, whoa, you pay attention here, what's going on? So I'm coming to you today because it's important to me, I'm coming to you today because it's, 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 conf it's a confusing conversation with lots of different voices, but I really believe that God still wants to speak to you about this issue. Why talk about it in church? Because your health is a spiritual issue. Your health is a spiritual issue. See, a lot of us want to compartmentalize our life. Like if, we, if we looked at our life in this, sort of this wheel right here, we could look at it like, okay, we got our relationships, our work, our spirituality, our health, our family, recreation. And a lot of us want to separate that out, especially work and family. But the reality is, is that we're not compartmentalized people. 
We're holistic people. Each one of these triangles overflows into the other because everywhere you are, everywhere you go, that's where you are. Have you ever thought about that? Everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> you can't leave a part of you at home and a part of, you know, some of you think, oh, well, this is my, sp I'm in church right now, so this is my spiritual side. No, you're spiritual when you go to the gym, you're spiritual when you go to work. Why? Because you're there. And if you're a Christian today, the Bible teaches very clearly that God is dwells inside of you 24-7. So everywhere you go, there he is. Not only you, but there he is. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of you 24-7. Every moment of your life is spiritual. Not just this one, but when you leave here, and then when you watch a movie later, and then when you take a nap later, and then you go watch whatever, to do, play video games later, whatever you do later, that's a spiritual moment. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's with you. Where does it, where's it teach that in the Bible? Let's look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Don't you realize that your body is the temple? The title of our talk today, by the way, is Healthy Temples. It says, don't you realize that your body, the shell that you have here, is the house, it's another word for temple, of what? Of who? The Holy Spirit. And where does he live? In you. Like God, if you're a believer today, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, and the Holy Spirit was given to you by the Father. So everywhere you go, there God is. So every moment of your life is a spiritual moment because God dwells inside of you 24-7. Does this make sense? Now, the context of this passage is sexual sin. Like Paul is trying to encourage the Corinthians not to commit sexual sin. Any sexuality outside of the context of a marriage between a man and a woman. He's trying to say, hey, don't you realize that when you commit fornication or adultery or any other type of form of sexual sin, your body is the temple. So you're taking God with you into that sin. Oh, gross. Who wants to do that? Nobody. Hey, Jesus, come on, let's go fornicate together. <laughs> let's go commit adultery together, me and you. Come on, let's go. Nobody wants to do that, which is why sexual sin, sin is temporary insanity, because you have to kind of block out the reality that God is with you. Paul is trying to say there's no such thing as, you know, a secular moment of sexual sin and then a moment of spirituality after that. No, it's all blended together. And so the same is true with your health. There's no such thing as, oh, I'm going to go to the gym right now, so this is my healthy moment, or this is my healthy moment when I'm going to do this or that. No, it's, you're, you're, it's all, it all mixes together. Paul continues on, and he says this. He says, you don't belong to yourself, which that's an interesting statement. We always think of our bodies as our bodies. It's not. If you're a believer today, your body's not yours. You'll give it back. Have you ever noticed people die, right? Can't take your body with you, so it stays here. Your soul departs from your body. And then one day when Jesus returns, he'll resurrect your body and your body will be reunited with your spirit, but that's in the future. You don't belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. What price was that? The very blood of Jesus Christ. Any higher price than that? So because you don't belong to yourself, you're sort of on lease, you're sort of on loan. Guess what you have to do? Guess what your job is? Honor God with your body. Again, the context here is sexual sin. He's saying, come on, come on, come on. Anytime you're about ready to indulge in sexual sin, be reminded your job is to honor God with your body and sexual sin does not honor God. So let's transfer this over to health and fitness. Any, anything we do with our body must honor God. Why? Because it doesn't belong to you. It's on loan and it's on lease. Is this making sense, yes or no? That's why we need to talk about this in church because your health is a spiritual Issue. Why else do we need to talk about this in church? To give you another reason. Your health is necessary to accomplish all that God has planned for you. Did you know that God has very specific things for you to accomplish, that he planned them before you were even born? Check this out, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. I love that work. We're like his work of art. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do all of the, say with me, the good things that he plan for us long ago. That's so exciting. Your life has meaning. If you've ever wondered if your life has purpose, it does. Now, you might not know what those things are. It's your job to figure them out. But you have to figure out why God has put you on this planet, and then you need to execute those plans. Here's the thing. How can you do that if you're sick, if you're ill, if you don't feel well, if you're dead? You can't do all the things that God has planned you to do if you're dead. Yes or no? Am I crazy? When I got COVID last two years ago, 
I couldn't do anything. You know what I did for 10 days, 14 days, whatever it was? Can you remember? I laid in bed. My wife had COVID at the same time. We were pitiful. No one, I couldn't help her. She couldn't help me. You know, it was, we did nothing. You know, we watched, we watched zombie apocalypse movies <laughs> for 10 days. That Netflix episode that came on, it was like, that's all we could do is just sit there. <laughs> moan about how bad our backs hurt and just couldn't even get out of bed. You can't do anything when you're sick. We need to be healthy in order to execute the plans that God has for us. Yes? A couple of years ago, I ran into a friend and he was telling me about how he quit smoking cold turkey. He was smoking like a pack a day. And Man, when I hear stuff like that, I get super intrigued. I'm like, whoa, how'd you do that? He said, well, I realize that if I keep smoking, I won't see my grandkids grow up. Ah, now there's the magic. If you can catch a glimpse of the reality that you're not going to be able to execute and experience all that God has for you in the future if you don't take care of your body, that's where things begin to change. Did you know, did you know that the five leading causes of death, let's, let's name them, in the United States, heart disease, cancer, respiratory illness, stroke, and accidents. Those are the top five. There are other causes of death, but those are the top five in the United States. Those top five killers take about 900,000 lives in the United States alone every single year. Almost a million people die from those, just those top five. Here's what the Center for Disease Control reported. This is on their website. You can check it out. 40% of those 900,000 deaths by heart disease, cancer, respiratory illness, stroke, accidents can be avoided, can be prevented, up to 40%. Now, if it's your time to die, you're going to die. Can we just talk frank? Like, this is a broken world. We live in a sinful world. People get sick. They get ill. I've done funerals for, for, for 19-year-olds. Like, they shouldn't have died. They didn't, it wasn't because they smoked cigarettes. There's a level of, of, of brokenness and, and tragedy in this life that just is what it is. And then there's the self-inflicted causes of death that are taking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lives every single year. Tom Friedman was the lead medical research doctor over the CDC for a couple of years, the director of it. Listen to what he said. As a doctor, it's heartbreaking to lose just one patient to a preventable disease or injury. And it is that much more poignant as the director of the nation's public health agency to know that far more than 100,000 deaths each year are preventable. Now, those 900,000 deaths were premature deaths because of respiratory illness, cancer, heart stroke, heart disease, all that stuff. They're premature deaths. Up to 40% of those were preventable. So what, we're, what I'm committed to is, like, my, my cousin died of, of colon cancer at 22. Like, there's not much she could do. Like, that's going to happen, Right? But there are certain things that I can control and certain things that you can control that can prevent colon cancer. You agree, yes or no? Like there's, so what we're going to try to do, and I'm going to share some things you can count today, is, to, is the controllables. We're going to try to control the controllables. We can't control the uncontrollables. Someone crosses the highway and hits you head on and you die. You can't, those are the uncontrollables, right? Even your seatbelt doesn't save you. So there's a level of that. And then there's the things that we can control in our lives. And that's what we can focus on. Make sense? Why? Because God has put you on this planet to accomplish things. And it's your job to honor God with your body because it doesn't belong to you. Yes? You with me? Tracking? Okay, so let's talk about it. What can we control? Number one, count the number of minutes that you exercise daily. This is what you can control. The, the science is in on this, 100%. When you exercise on a regular basis... You have more energy, more oxygen is flowing, flowing into your blood system, which gives you increased levels of energy. You can think with more clarity and creativity and solve problems. You can work better under pressure. You perform at your maximum capacity. You improve your, or, or reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease in your heart. And you lower the bad cholesterol, the LDL in your body. All of that is scientifically proven. I don't have to, we don't have to pray about that. Hey, is he right about that? You can check me, that's fine. But when you do the research, 
It's all, it's all there. In fact, the Mayo Clinic actually says this on their website. This is what they say. As a general room, aim for 30 minutes of moderate exercise every single day. That's the recommendation from the Mayo Clinic. Now, on the opposite spectrum, a sedentary lifestyle, a lifestyle with no exercise, puts you in a situation where you are at risk, watch this, of almost every single illness out there. Just being still, not moving at all. That's not a safe plan because God has created your body, God has created my body to move. You say, well, what kind of exercise are we talking about here? Well, here's what the recommendation is. The recommendation is to get your heart rate up to 65 to 70, 65 to 70% of your target heart rate. Now, how do you figure out what your target heart rate is? You just take the number 220 and then you subtract your age. So say for me, it's like 220 minus 45 is like one, is that 175? Well, is that right? Some of you math whizzes? It's 175, I think. I need to get my heart rate up to 60 to 75% of 175, which is about 130. 130 for 30 minutes every single day. You with me? I know that was a lot of numbers there, but it's 220 minus your age, whatever that number is, it's 60 to 70%, 60 to 75% of that number. You need to get your heart rate up. Stephen Blair uh, is this really smart dude, and I wrote down some things about Stephen Blair so that I wouldn't forget them, but <laughs> Stephen Blair is the professor of exercise science at the Arnold School of Business at the University of Southern California. That was a mouthful. This dude is the leading expert in exercise science. He's written 650 pages, uh, papers, not pages, papers. He has been quoted, check this out, 46 thousand times by other exercise scientists. He's the most frequently quoted doctor in the area of exercise science. This is what Stephen Blair said. The number one predictor of death is low cardiovascular fitness. Wow. How important is exercise? It is the game. It is the ball game. In fact, I was talking with some of my staff members earlier and, and the, cons the concern about this conversation was gonna, be, was gonna be about like, are you talking about being skinny? Like, is this all about being skinny? And you tell me I should be skinny? It's like, no, actually I'm not. There's research done by the Cooper Institute for Aerobics that said skinny people who don't exercise are three times more likely to die young than heavy people who exercise 30 minutes a day. This isn't about being skinny. This is about moving your body 30 minutes a day. You with me, yes or no? This is a spiritual, spiritual issue. Number two, let's talk about hydration. You wanna count the number of ounces of water you drink every single day. Everybody knows this, but we need to say it again. 60% of your body is water. It's unbelievable. I can't believe that. You're mostly water. Even your bones are 25% water. Look at this, I got a little breakdown for you. Your brain is 75% water. Blood, 83% water. Heart, 79% water. Your muscles are 75% water. Your liver is 85% water. Did you know that every single day, your body loses two to three liters of water? Every single, just by waking up, just by sleeping, you lose a ton of water through your mouth breathing. <laughs> it just comes out of you. And we dehydrate all, all, all night long as we're sleeping. And then for the rest of the day, we're sweating, even though we're not, no, we don't even know it. When you don't replace the water in your body, you suffer from dehydration, which affects your ability to think straight. It affects your stamina, affects your physical capacity. It, 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 every cell in your body needs water to function. Did you know that? Every single cell needs this stuff to work the way it's supposed to work. In fact, when you don't get water for just a few days, everything shuts down. You can live without food for 40 days. Some of you are fasting right now during this 21-day fast. You're, 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 you're struggling. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. You can live without food for 40 days. You know how many days you can live without water max? Five, mostly three. You're dead after three days. Everything shuts down. Without this, 
You need water. So how much do you need to drink? Well, this is my best, you know, based on my research and everything, anywhere from 64 to 128 ounces of water. See, that's a lot of water. I know, you need it. You're losing it every single day. There's a lady named Natalie Dimitri, Dimitrivia. I can't really say her name that well. Uh, again, this is another one of those really smart people that did a bunch of research, so I'm going to read you. Her, she, she's one of the leading researchers at the Laboratory of Cardiovascular Regenerative Medicine at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. She did this big study on hydration. This is what she found. The results suggest that proper hydration may slow down aging and prolong a disease-free life. Wow just by drinking water. Okay, you've heard that, don't have to beat that down. Let's talk about this last one, calories. Everybody loves to talk about calories. What can you count? You count your, your workouts, count your hydration, and then count calories. Count the number of calories you consume daily. Now, calories are interesting. I think they're awesome because they keep you alive. They really do. Calories are fantastic. Calories are units of energy. Calories are food. Food is calories. And it, guess what? It takes food to make energy. So the reason I'm giving this sermon today is because I have calories in me. I ate last night. I ate this morning. And that food is giving me the energy right now in my brain, the, the, the focus right now to deliver and communicate these words. Calories are, the, are they're, you can't live without them. They give, your, they give life to your body and the better quality calories you get into your body then the better you, have, you feel and all that stuff and you, we should get nutrient dense calories and as much as we can. The problem with calories, <laughs> and you know what it is. What is the problem with calories? We like them a lot. <laughs> we like them too much and we take in more than we need and when we take in more than we need, guess what happens to our bodies? Well, you tell me what happens. Yeah, we gain weight. We gain weight. Center for Disease Control said this, that when a person takes in more calories than is necessary. It puts a person at risk for high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, cancer, osteoarthritis, high levels of LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, type two diabetes, stroke, sleep apnea, body pain, and the list goes on and on and on and on. It is not good for you to take in more calories than your body can, can, can burn. So what's the answer? Well, it's kind of similar to a finance situation. Hey, if you spend less money than you make, you're going to be all right. <laughs> Watch this. Take in less calories than you burn. Oh, everybody say, whoa, that's deep. That's deep. Now, I don't want to make a big argument about this, about good calories, bad calories. I think you could talk about that. It's important to get the best kind of calories you can from, from good fats and healthy proteins and all that, all that stuff, good carbohydrates. But I don't, I'm not going to get all that, okay? You guys can study all that. It's important. You need to study it. What I want to talk to you about real quick is just the, the, the reality that we need to watch our calories. I just don't think people know how much they're eating. You ever go to a restaurant, you look like, we went to Olive Garden last night. I was looking at some of the, they have to put the calories down there now. It's like, I was looking at the different dishes. It's like, one dish was a, like the tour of Italy or something. It's like 1,300 calories. Like, 1,300 calories? That's the whole, that's almost the whole day, right? In one meal. This is, we, we have no idea. I was talking to a, a, somebody the other day about this and adding up, he was adding up the calories he was taking in from Cokes and Gatorades and different. This dude was taking in a thousand calories a day just from his drinks without even thinking. Just, just, just Coke here, Gatorade here, Coke here, Gatorade here. Okay, let's talk about it. Mark Hobb. This is another one of those really smart dudes. I wanted to read you his credentials. Mark Hobb said this. He, well, he, well, actually, he, he's a professor of human nutrition at, at the Kansas State, at Kansas State University. He wanted to show and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that counting calories is really the ball game. So what he did was he did this 10-week study where all he ate was Twinkies. This is Mark Hobb, and he just, he, just, he just ate Twinkies. Well, he also ate zebra cakes, and he also ate some Oreo cookies, but his whole... Whole 10 weeks, he was junk food. He did take a, a, a multivitamin, and he did do a protein shake. But other than the multivitamin and the protein shake, all he ate was Twinkies. But here was his thing. He limited himself to 1,800 calories of Twinkies. 
And so over 10 weeks, this, this cat right here lost 27 pounds by eating Twinkies. Yeah, yeah. I felt the same way. I was like, what? And, and the reason he did it was to show that if you can create a caloric deficit, a deficit in your calories, in other words, you're eating less than you're burning, you will lose weight. Incredibly, his, his bad cholesterol went down and his good cholesterol went up. Now, he would be the first one to tell you, and I would tell you also, and anybody who knows anything about this would tell you, that's not a good long-term plan. Okay, then don't leave here and say, well, I'm changing my diet. Pastor Danny said so, you know. No, you, you want to get fruits and vegetables and mostly eat, you know, a, a, a very, very high level of, of, of dense nutrient, you know, food with lots of greens. That would be the best plan to go. But the point is, is that you have to watch what you have to, we have to count them. If you're not counting them, you're going to overconsume, and if you overconsume, you gain weight, and you put your risk, at, you put yourself at risk at all kinds of all kinds of health problems. Does that make sense? Why would I talk about this? I, I don't have a new, I don't have a, pro, a workout program to sell you today. There's no signups. Hey, you know, tomorrow morning, you know, go to DannyAnderson.net. We're going to start working out together. No, I don't have a I don't have a pill. I don't have a supplement. All I have is my. This is important to me. My family does not have good genes. There's heart disease, there's cancer. People die prematurely in my family. There's bad ha health habits going on. And so like I'm looking at this like, man, this is important. It's important to stay healthy because I wanna function at my maximum capacity. I wanna honor God with my life. I wanna fulfill the plans that he has for me on this earth. How about you? I'm motivated to do that. And I just want to share this with you guys. I count this stuff, not every single day, but I'm aware of it, what is going in my body, how am I treating my body, because it's important. So my question to you today is a, is a tough one. How healthy are you? How healthy are you? You know, you got to give yourself a number. Last week, I asked you what your attitude was. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, were you sauna dude or where, you know, where are you at? <laughs> um, like, how healthy are you? Are you a supersized guy, you know? And that's all you do is fast food, and you run, and you go, and you don't have time, and you make excuses? You know, where, where, where are you on the scale? Maybe you start counting some of these. Look, this stuff actually works, and I hope that you will take some of it. Now, there are so many other things that you can count when it comes to your health. I wanted to do a whole thing on sleep. I think sleep is massively important. Uh, if you're not sleeping well and, and, and doing, putting stuff in your body to help sleep well, you're going you're gonna to really be in trouble over the long run, but I ran out of time. So there are other things to say about this, but I wanted to give you the top three. Is this helpful? Encouraging? You didn't hear anything today that was new? I promise. Yeah. You didn't hear anything today that, what, that was like monumental or new. You were just reminded today of what you know you need to do. Yes? Yes? Okay. Now. As we walk out of here, we talked about the physical body today. It's important. We need to honor God with our body, with our body, because He lives inside of us. Let me talk to you about your soul for some of you today as we close. You, there's, there's, there's different parts of you. There's your body. There's your soul. Where your soul is made up of your mind, your emotions, your feelings, your desires, your appetites, your will. It's the it's the intangible part of you, the unseen part of you. It's the part of you that departs your your body upon death. Jesus, is, it's interesting, Jesus uses the metaphor of food and water that the body needs to describe himself as the satisfaction of the soul. It's so interesting that he does that. See, the body needs food and water to stay alive. We all know that. And Jesus turns, turns, the, turns it around and says, okay, in the same way that your body needs food and water to survive, your soul needs food and water to survive, but it's a different kind. Listen to what he said in John chapter six. He says, I'm, I am the bread of spiritual life, Zoe. There's bread for physical life, there's bread for spiritual life. Whoever comes to me, whoever believes in me, trusts in me, it's another way to say that, will never be hungry again. Meaning this, that if you look to me with your soul appetites, you will consume and partake and you'll be satisfied. 
whoever believes in me, and then he switches it to liquid, will never be thirsty again. Jesus is the satisfaction of, of the soul. And in the same way that we consume bread and water to stay alive, we need to consume him to stay alive. How do we consume him? We, we consume him through faith, looking to him, trusting in him, believing in him. That's how we're saved. We're saved by faith. See, Jesus came to this earth and he died on a cross to pay for your sin and my sin so that he can be in fellowship with us, so that he could be the satisfaction of our souls and satisfy us at the deepest level. And maybe you never heard it put that way before. But for me, that made complete sense because I was a thirsty person. I was a hungry person. I was trying to fill my life with all kinds of things, coming up empty every single time until I turned to Christ. Maybe today is your day. Will you turn to him as the satisfaction of your soul, as the bread of life, the living water? Will you ask him to be your savior? I'm gonna lead you in a simple prayer. It's a prayer of faith. You could take these words, whatever campus you're at, reach up to Jesus, ask him to be your savior today. Will you pray with me? Just say this to him, dear Jesus, my soul is thirsty, my soul is hungry. I've been looking for satisfaction in all the wrong places. But today I turn to you. I choose to take in the spiritual bread, the spiritual water, and that is you. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. Paid the price I should have paid. I ask you to cleanse me and forgive me of all my wrongdoing, my sin. Make me your child today. Wash me clean. Fill my heart. Satisfy my soul. I place my faith in you. And from this day forward, teach me to live off you to thrive off of you, to feed off of you, to drink you into my life and find in you the satisfaction of my soul. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer at any one of our locations or online, we wanna give God glory, amen. We have put a little, uh, little box together. We call it our save box. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in him will be saved. If you just trusted in Christ today, please text the word SAVE to 65248. You can grab one of these at the information desk at your campus. There's a Bible in here, some instructions on how to get you started, and a little gift for us to say congratulations to you. One more time, church. Can we give God glory? Amen. And will you pray with me? And then we're gonna dismiss to our local teams. Heavenly Father, we love you. We know that you have given us these bodies. They're temporary for now, but they're, they're important. We live in these bodies. You live in these bodies. And so help us to, to live that way, to honor you with our life, to proceed forward from this day, understanding that this body's on loan, doesn't belong to us. You purchased it with a price. Therefore, help us to glorify you with it. God, help us to have the energy and the strength to execute on all the things you put us on this planet to do for your honor and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love you guys. I'll see you next week. I'm gonna hand things off to the local teams right now.